All right, so at the end of this video, I wanna do something new and I hope to do this on all videos. So drop a comment down below and ask me anything. It could be a question about literally anything unrelated to the video and I'll start answering some of those questions at the end of my videos. If y'all want more videos like this, click that like button because it seriously helps out the channel. What's up everyone, welcome to a new video. I know it's been a minute, but I'm trying to make these videos as much as I can. When you work a full-time job, it's really hard. So I'm trying the best I can, and today I'm bringing you five things you should stop doing right now. Like, I watch a lot of travel videos and just vlogs in general, and honestly, everything and anything. But the thing I always see is a lot of errors that people keep doing and they never fix. These are all biased because they're my personal opinion, but take it as you wish. Maybe if you start making some of these changes, it'll make your videos a little bit better. Before we jump into the video, just know that I always give away one free version of my ultimate effects pack. Click the link down in the description down below. The winner is going to be announced in the description. So starting off with number one, stop fast cut speed ramping, whatever you want to call it. Like when you speed ramp, it should smoothly ramp. I see so many times someone's running and then all of a sudden it and then back to normal speed running. While that works when you're trying to glitch something, I see it used so often to just like transition clips and it doesn't really look that good. What I mean by that is watch this clip right here. As you can see, I am using a fast speed ramp stutter and it doesn't really look that good. Now, if I use the same clip and play it back with a smooth speed ramp, you can see that it blends together a little bit more seamlessly. I've done a tutorial on that specific effect and how to use the speed ramp, and I'll link that down below. This video was made possible by my friend at Skillshare. I'm always trying to find the best way to learn something new, and with Skillshare, I'm able to find what I need quickly and efficiently. I can search anything within the website and watch videos from creators just like me. I've been trying to learn more and more every time I'm on Skillshare and just finished this class from Christopher Rhodes on how to shoot on a budget. It was pretty incredible, and I learned a lot. Whether you'd like to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to learn something new. And at less than $10 a month, it's a no-brainer. Since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they're going to hook you up with two free months when you sign up using the link in the description down below. Number two, using Easy Ease. So Easy Ease is built into the software and it's actually incredible once you start using it. If you do a lot of reframing and scaling, using Easy Ease will blend that and make it a little bit more seamless. I am so tired of seeing someone zoom into a clip and then it just harshly stops. It doesn't look as good and when you actually Easy Ease it, it's incredible. So this is how you do it. All right, so we have the clip that we're going to use Easy Ease on. Typically I'll go to Effects and type in Transform and then drag on the transform effect and then go to effects controls. Now we can start to manipulate the scale and position if you'd like. For this example, I'm just gonna set a keyframe at 100%, go a couple frames and change my scale to 150 and then it'll automatically add another keyframe. As you can see, this is the harsh zoom that I absolutely hate. In order to easy ease this, you can right click on the first one and go to ease out because you wanna ease out of this first one and right click on your second one and go to ease in. Once you play that back, it looks pretty nice. It's pretty smooth, uh, but if you want to blend it even further, click this little arrow on the side and drag this little guy down and click on your first one and drag this out a little bit and then click on your second one and drag that out a little bit as well. That's basically adjusting the ramp and you can customize that however you'd like. The last step I'd like to do is uncheck use composition shutter angle and change the shutter angle to around 200 or 250. This will basically create fake motion blur and if you put the shutter angle back to zero, you'll see that we have no motion blur. So using that shutter angle will allow your footage to blend a little bit more seamless. Number three, use motion flow. I just did a video on this not too long ago, so I'll link it down below, but it is the concept of using motion to blend your clips together. So if you are running and you take a right step, you should then transition your clip to someone else running by taking a right step. You gotta think about how your clip's gonna blend together. So if you go from filming a tree to filming someone diving into a pool, it might not look the best. So you gotta think of ways of how can you blend that. So if I'm filming the tree with the pool in the background and then show someone diving into the pool with that tree in the background, it may blend a little bit easier. But check out the video down below and that'll show you how to use it with motion flow. Number four, this is mainly when you are shooting with drones. 
so commonly I see people shooting with drones. They're getting this nice pan shot and then all of a sudden the drone like stutters and then it keeps going on with the pan. But the thing is they don't take that out. They leave it in their footage. I am so triggered that I can literally see like the tiniest little movement. And I'll show you a couple clips of what that looks like. And it is so frustrating. Like if you have an eye, you can literally just see what it looks like and then change it. So please stop doing that. That is something that I just like cringe every single time. When you get a smooth track shot, it looks so much better. And finally, number five is when people forget sound design. So often I see some music going on and all of a sudden there's like a spin or a slide or a zoom in transition and there's no sound attached to it. So it's literally out of nowhere. It's not even attached to the audio or the music that's going on. So think about sound design when you're working in your clips. I know it's an extra step, but once you finish up a project, go back through and mute your audio track and then try to add sound effects of being in the area. So we're at that point in the video where I answer some of your questions. So starting off, Wildfire says, how does someone get into documentary filmmaking? It's an interest that I have as a future career and was wondering how you go about seeking a job for that. Well, the biggest thing I would say is start right now. Like you don't have to go out searching for that dream job. Let the job kind of come to you. And what I mean by that is build your portfolio. So I started out just filming anything and everything that I loved. And before I knew it, I was able to reach out to a job and reach out to a company and just showed them my stuff. Because in this line of work, it's kind of like your work speaks for itself. The biggest thing I would say is practice, practice, practice. Go out with your friends, film something, film a vlog, and just kind of try to create a story. Because documentary filmmaking is different from then just a travel video. You really have to capture the emotion that is going on and tell a story. So practice with your camera at home and before you know it you're gonna have a portfolio and be so confident to talk to anyone and everyone where he said hey i was wondering how long it would take for the pack to be updated been waiting for a while smiley face really waiting for those possible shakes and more i really want to update this pack so much and i've been spending a little bit of time here and there but i've kind of dedicated an hour each day for the past couple weeks to try to really make this launch amazing. And it kind of sucks because my schedule with work is nonstop travel. I'm always away on the weekends and I'm trying to spend as much time as I can on YouTube stuff and work as well. I'm just trying to find a balance, but I hope to have an update in the next month and it's gonna be massive. Joker Maniac says, love how quick and simple this was. I'd love to see some more stuff that is often used in lifestyle vlogs, how to edit B-roll effects and add your own text way. It's just not boring text on the screen. Maybe some time lapses or glitching boxes. Great stuff, Kyler. Well, I have a lot of stuff coming soon and I will definitely keep that in mind and I can pretty much create anything. So if you guys want something, let me know down below. Hopefully you guys will drop some questions down in the comments down below so I have something to talk about at the end of my next video. If you guys like today's video, click that thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below and subscribe if you're new because I'm gonna be making some more stuff in the future. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.